Welcome everyone, my name is Logan from Decoder Reality, and this is Random Thoughts, where we take the seven different topics, as you see here, and we kind of decode them and blend them all together. This is version number eight, so if you haven't seen my seven previous, if you like this one, go check out the other ones that I've done. If you're new to this, welcome, and I will just ask you to just follow the breadcrumbs. It's like putting a puzzle together as we decode these topics. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so very much for coming back. I greatly appreciate you. Now before we get started folks, I want to go through the methods of my decoding. First and foremost, we use numerology. Some like to call it gematria, but nonetheless, numerology is the science of numbers. Each letter is fixed to a number and there are several different ciphers or methods out there. I like to primarily use the Chaldean and the English. Both of them end up linking to the number eight. But nonetheless, look at, notice that, uh, you know, numerology is a number 43. I use Dramatronator.com, Derek's website. And then we can bring in another layer and attach, of course, prime numbers, Fibonacci numbers, triangular numbers, using the website numberempire.com notice the number 43 is the 14th prime number what does that mean well you know when you start to find these connections you can bring in multiple layers and it gives you a broader scope of what this narrative and how this matrix works the other method i like to bring in is science alchemy the elements of the periodic table the 118 of them so far these also attach to prime numbers and numerology numbers and outcomes and stuff like that. Notice technetium, the 43rd element, is tied to numerology and the 14th prime number. Then we can also bring in the cards of illumination, which are one of my favorites. Very, very accurate, folks. The 43rd card, the four of spades, tied to technetium and, of course, numerology. And these cards are super accurate, and the very reason why they are is because they're embedded into nature. There are 52 cards in the deck, including the Joker, and there are four suits, as you know. You have the clubs, the diamonds, the hearts, and the spades, and those cards each have 13 cards per suit, matching the 13 weeks per season. So they're highly accurate when using them tied to numerology and alchemy and tarot and all that kind of stuff and you know you're gonna have some of these attached to your birthday and I highly suggest decoding yourself it's one of the greatest things you can do you'll get the keys to your kingdom as I like to say I made a video on it not too long ago how to decode yourself it's just over an hour long and I bring in 10 different modalities from human design to Native American medicine cards to astrology and I'd suggest going and checking it out because there you will find exactly what part of your destiny is all about and then what we do is, after the Cards of Illumination, we can bring in the Tarot, because the Tarot is an offshoot of the Cards of Illumination. And, you know, the Four of Spades in the Cards of Illumination is the Four of Swords in the Tarot. And then we can kind of measure from there, and we can read about the Four of Spades. It gives us some descriptive keywords, and it'll give us another layer to observe it from. And then we can also bring in the Medicine Cards, the Animal Tarot, as I like to call it. There are 52 of these cards, they're all numbered, and they have animals on there for symbology uh, references, and we can decode from there. So you have all these layers that you can connect and put the puzzle together, which is quite fascinating. And then also, let's not forget, pi, the perfect circle. Everything can be measured within the perfect circle, and we live on a circle, which is Earth. You can call it flat or round, it doesn't matter point is is that it's round in some way shape or form and that is measured through the never-ending digits of pi notice the number 43 appears at the 23rd decimal digit of pi but when you go a little bit further 43 actually occupies the 23rd and the 24th number and when you add those two up you're going to get the number 47 which i'm going to be touching on during this presentation so there you have it folks there is the methods of decoding and here we go the top seven categories the first one would be the white house in washington dc the second topic is the freemason albert pike the third topic is the goat baphomet the fourth topic would be the atomic bombs that were dropped in japan the fifth would be the tv evangelist joel osteen 
God, that guy brings in a lot of people. The sixth topic is one of nature. It's Ohm's law, which would be voltage, currency, and resistance, which is kind of what makes up our matrix reality. And then the last topic that we're going to decode is the number 56, which is a massive, massive number. If you're seeing this number, well, you're tuning into it. So we're going to touch on that at the very tail end of this presentation. So here we go, folks. The number one topic starting off this thing is the White House and what the White House has to do with our matrix reality because it has so much to do with it. So here we go, folks. I wanted to show you kind of, you know, what Zillow, it's kind of interesting. You go and type in any address and Zillow will pop up, which is all about real estate. But notice, you know, 1600 Pennsylvania Ave. Is the address have any kind of relevance? What about the bedrooms and baths? And the square footage, which is right there. Why do they have these numbers there? Do they have any meaning to it? Are they just picked at random? Well, let's break it down, folks. Look at this. This is where it really kind of starts to tell the story and the narrative. And I like to bring in, of course, the elements of the periodic table. 16 bedrooms in the White House, 35 bathrooms. I mean, it was all done by design, of course. And look at the square footage, 55,000. There's that 55, you know, the Washington Monument, 555 feet tall. But when we bring in the periodic table and the elements and alchemy, we have sulfur 16 and bromine 35. And you know, when you add those up, just using the masculine side, and there's a very good reason, most of you know, I usually add up all the masculine and feminine, but there's a reason why I'm doing it here. 31 and 79 equals the number 110. Now, when you go and you look up the square footage, 55,000, that's related to the 55th element, cesium, which has an atomic mass of 132.905. It only has one. Notice when we bring in pi, the 132 appears at the 110th decimal digit of pi, matching that of the bedrooms and baths of the White House. So these three numbers are completely in sync with one another. Notice, you know, the 132 is related to the 55 and the 55,000 square feet, the living square footage of the White House. It's a 55 through numerology. 132 equals 55. And bringing again math into this, 55 is the 10th Fibonacci number, which is a big freaking deal. And, you know, we bring in ancient biblical stuff. The Hebrew letter, the 10th one, is the Yod. We're going to be getting into that, folks. What does the yo got to do with the White House? Well, it has everything to do with it, folks. So it's running the White House. Yod Heh Vah Heh, the Tetragrammaton. I mean, here, look at this. God bless America. 47. Washington, D.C., 47. White House, 47. The University right down the street, Georgetown, 47. That's a match of the Tetragrammaton. What is the Tetragrammaton? It's the ancient... Israelite God of the Holy Bible. That's why they use the Bible when they inaugurate presidents and they put their hand on it. That's why they use it in the court of law because they're paying tribute to the yod heh vah It's right there, folks. That's what they're paying tribute to. Whether you want to believe that or not, that's up to you. I mean, again, these are just my opinions and truths. I mean, I'm not going to force anything on you. It's all up to the observer. But I think it's clear here what's going on. Notice the yod heh vah in its original spelling is 26. It's a 10565. That's a prime number, by the way, if you go look that up. But then let's bring that in here and see what it's all about. What's, what's the big deal about the yod heh vah Because it's tied to the White House in Washington, D.C. It's what they're drawing their power off of. Go read Romans 13, verses 1, Isaiah 45, 7. But notice when we bring in alchemy, 10, 5, 6, 5, it's neon, boron, carbon, boron. 10, 5, 6, 5. Go over to the trusty calculator. We add that up. We get the number 55 on the masculine side, 0 0.001, but 55. And I just showed it's 50, you know, the, the White House is 55,000 square feet. It's linked to the 110, the 132, the 55. And that's what the yod heh equals, 55. And that's linked to the element iron as well. As in the Romans, the Iron Age. Perhaps this is where this character came in 
to power during those times. Notice, you know, the 26 is the king of clubs. And the clubs, folks, is the mind. It's the king of the mind. If anything's going to run us, it's going to be the mind, not the physical. The king of the mind, yod heh vah -Heh. And notice the four classic elements that make up who we are. Fire, air, water, earth, which of course also equals the four fixed signs of astrology. The lion, ox, eagle, man. That's also a 55. So, you know, I mean, you go do your own research, but there it is. Showing you the connections. To me, it's undeniable. Which, of course, you know, the Yodei Vai can be Yaldabaoth and the makeup of Lucifer and Jesus and all this stuff that we've been told to stay away from. And it's, you know, it's really interesting. But it's all connected. It's all the same origin. Notice the White House, the construction. This is really interesting, folks. The construction started October 13th and ended on November 1st. Here are the two cards for that. October 13th is the Nine of Clubs. And the... Uh, November 1st, the completion is the Six of Diamonds. What do you see there? You see the yin yang, the 96. That's why these cards, if you're not using them to decode, I, I don't know what you're waiting for because these have everything to do with our matrix. It was a span of 2,941 days. That's important as well because in the string of pi, you'll notice you know it sits between those four digits. The 8,085th digit starting where the two is and then it ends at the 8,088 digit of pi. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, some of you that decode, you think Jesus is 888. Well, who do you think's part of the White House, ladies and gentlemen? It's all the same origin. Here's part of the address of the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, kind of the street address. Notice it's a 74. That's related to the element tungsten. Tungsten is all about illumination. The W is the 23rd letter, which is linked to the word crown and blood and history. All those words equal 23. Tungsten was used in light bulbs, which is related to illumination. That's what light bulbs do. Notice the big standout here, the 1600, which is the actual number of Pennsylvania Avenue. Look where it appears at the string of pi, in the string of pi, 22222, 22,222nd decimal digit of pi. Absolutely fascinating to me, if you ask me. And you wonder why they chose 1600. Again, folks, you know, are they sitting down with all these elements and saying, you know, gotta, we gotta use this and that. Folks, listen, I'm gonna tell you straight up, man is being used. Okay? They're not consciously making all these decisions on their own. Absolutely no freaking way. Man is being used. You're being used. I'm being used. Being used as food energetically. Look at this, folks. I mean, you want to talk about sinks? Look at, look at the addresses here, folks. The, come on, Google. The biggest artificial intelligence driver on the planet has the same numerology output as the address of the White House? I wonder who's running who. <laughs> They're both 144, as in 144,000, as in the Great Pyramids of Giza, because the Great Pyramid of Giza, those three pyramids actually are 60 and 61 with their latitude, longitude, which is all related to neodymium and promethium, which is all related to the 144. So these are related to the pyramids. And notice, you know, why did they choose 1600? Well, I showed the 22222, but when we break it down and leave the zeros out, it, it relates to sulfur. Notice the S, the sine wave, the serpent, the snake. Sulfur is very reactive to water. It's violent. And, you know, when you bring in the string of pi, look at this. 31 appears at the 137th decimal digit right there, folks, in the English Washington, D.C., 137. And we're going to get into the 137 because that's, of course, the 33rd prime number. What about the actual street name, Pennsylvania, which is actually a state as well. So it would obviously correspond to that as well. That's the number 44. And the 99 appears at the 44th decimal digit. 44 and 45, but there it is, the 99. 
is related to the 44, which is related to the tetragrammaton. If some of you have been following my research, you know the 99. It's Einsteinium, which Einstein, back to the future, time travel, 99 is the tetragrammaton. So that brings in the second topic, which we're going to continue with the 99, and that's Mr. Albert Pike, the Freemason himself. The, you know, the guy who just had his statue ripped down on July 19th, Juneteenth, as Trump called it. Albert Pike, look at these matches using multiple ciphers. I mean, typically I use the English and Chaldean, but I couldn't help myself. Look at this. There's the 99 tied to the 1600 and Washington DC and this guy's a big icon in Washington DC 33 right there on his chest look at this he's third 303 in the primes 740 in the triangular and 33 in the Chaldean folks a big standout right there Mr. Albert Pike he wrote a book called morals and dogma and uh, <laughs> there's your 137 Told you we'd see more of that. 137 again is the 33rd prime number. So again, folks, you know, is he, is he choosing this title? Be, and the whole book, of course, this is shortened, but the book actually has more words in there. But this is the shortened version of it. Um, but 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 did he did he sit down consciously and say, I'm going to write a book, and I and it needs to be, and this is the title it's going to be, and I'm going to have to work it out through numerology because it's got to equal the number 137. I say no freaking way, no way, no possible way, folks. Man is being used, being used, folks. I mean, look at this. Again, Washington, D.C., 137, Morals and Dogma. The guy was a high-level Mason. The Masons built Washington, D.C. I mean, look at this. You know, folks, 137 through numerology in the English is 155. And look at where that sits in the string of pi. It's pi itself. 314th decimal digit is where 155 starts in the string of pi. That's how important this number is in 33. Now you know where the 137 and the 33 all stand with the 155 and the pi. We're using the website evanderson.com. I'll leave these links in the description so you can have easy access to click on them. But this is 861 decimal places past the three point why 861 because the original printing of morals and dogma had 861 pages folks look at the last three digits of the 861 decimal places past the three point 137 i mean how's that possible again you know look at do you realize what you'd have to do to come up with these outcomes as an individual, do you realize how much time it would take? It would be impossible. So man's being used, folks. So all of you that think decode, oh, it's all rigged. And, you know, listen, man ain't doing it. Keep trying to tell all of you, man is being used. They're like possessed, possession. Albert Pike was buried in the Oak Hill Cemetery. Notice it's a number 22. Why is 22 important? Well, it's the element titanium. What's the name of Saturn's moon? It's called Titan. So this is Saturn's sun right here, titanium. Notice the 47, Washington DC 47, tied to the 137, tied to 33. You know, I mean, look at this, 22 acres, 8.9. I don't even know what the HA means. A little bit ignorant on that, but 89 is Yaldabaoth. So Yaldabaoth's tied to the Yode Valle, probably the same character. Probably the same thing, tetragrammaton, folks. This guy's got, this is where this guy's buried. Maybe they chose that on purpose. I don't know, but nonetheless, there it is. I mean, even this right here, the R Street 29, 2900 block 29's Yaldabaoth, folks. Now, this, you know, this was the memorial that got ripped down on June 19th, which is called Juneteenth. That equals 122. That's linked to the all seeing eye of antimony, but. Nonetheless, uh, you know, June 19th is when they ripped the statue down and lit it fire because of the protests and Pike's association with the Confederacy. Notice it was erected in 1901. That's related to the element osmium, as in the Wizard of Oz. This is the Wizard of Oz right here, 76, osmium. Go study that element. 
That's what it's linked to. That's why it was erected in 1901, because it's related to the Wizard of Oz. June 19th, the card is the 24th card is the Jack of Clubs, the knight on the chessboard. And uh, why am I showing that? Well, before I get into the Jack of Clubs, the last slide I have with this is in Little Rock, Arkansas, Albert Pike has a Masonic Center. Here's the address. I know it's 700, I think to 720, but 712 Scott Street is the actual address. This is what I was given off Wikipedia. Look at the outcome, folks. Wow, there's another 33. Again, folks, how is it possible? Because man is being used to strengthen the story of the Matrix. That's why, folks. When these things are in sync, when they're in tune, it strengthens the story, makes it stronger. Okay, so again, going back to this, this is when the memorial was ripped down June 19th. It was a Jack of Clubs day, 24th card. And, uh, and that gets us into our third category, Baphomet, the sabbatical goat, Capricorn, which is the 10th sign. And remember what the 10th letter is in the Hebrew alphabet, the Yod, folks, yod Vai. Shh, don't tell anybody, though. Don't tell anybody. And there's the 24. We talked about the Jack of Clubs and, you know, the memorial being ripped down of Albert Pikes on June 19th. It's the 24th card. Here's 24. I mean, here are the two words inscribed on the character Baphomet by Mr. Levi himself. Salve and coagula, which of course means to blend together. And this would be the character to blend it all together. That's why I have the two serpents there. You know? And, you know, this is with the value of alchemology. That's the word I've kind of coined it now. It's taking numerology and tying it into alchemy. Alchemology, and notice the salve becomes a 51.044, and then coagula is a 49.067. 51 and 49. What's missing is the 50. Well, this is the 50. 51 is the as above, 49 is the so below. And it's the blending of these two together. I've placed the blue and the red because obviously this indicates. Blue shift, if you follow Santos Bonacci's work, blue shift, red shift. Blue is the throat, Saturn. Red is the uh, root, which is Mercury. Saturn and Mercury. As above, so below. And then what you have in the middle is the element tin, the 50th. I did a video on this, the flower of life and Taurus fields decoded. You may want to check it out. I thought it was a really good one. It's got a lot of good remarks and feedback from this, but this is the alchemical symbol of tin and notice it's the merging of worlds it's inside the flower of life and it literally is the merger of worlds because tin you know look at the weight of it 119 the mirror of the 911 and it's in between the 51 and the 49 which is this the 50 using this methodology and this is what it looks like when you use the color scheme as well, because, you know, this is all about RGB. If you're a graphic designer, you know all about the RGB in Photoshop. It's red, green, and blue. And um, the three primary colors, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to have the ones in between, but RGB is where it's at. And, you know, when you take 49.067, which is the so below, and you divide it, into the as above, you're going to get the number 0.96, which is the green, which of course this character represents the heart chakra because this salve and coagula is blending. That's that's alchemy. It's bringing the two together, which is of course why September 11th happened. They knocked two towers down and they built the one in the middle. That was the sacrifice of all those people, those poor people that cost them their lives because they don't care about people. It's all about their rituals. That's where the heartless ones differ from the ones that have hearts like you and I that really care about the world. But when you understand this symbology and the way this works and this magic and all the rituals, you'll, you'll steer away from what you believe to be satanic and realize that the esoteric is much more of a neutrality than anything else. But nonetheless, that's what it is. Look at this, the blending. 
and you get the yin yang of Baphomet, which is the merger of worlds, which is a very balanced merger of worlds because there's the yin yang right there. You know, we go a little bit further, folks. This is really Roy G. Biv is kind of, you know, the terminology they use for the color spectrum. There's the seven colors, red to violet. Notice it's a number 22. And, you know, if you know what the number 22 is, it the word alchemy equals 22. The word change equals 22. What is this character all about? Change. Changing thing. Blending together. Change. And notice the lines, you know, again, here it is, alchemy, 22. Even the archangel Michael is a 22. Even the word dragon equals the number 22. And, you know, notice the element sodium has an atomic mass or weight of 22. This is one of the character Jesus' elements. He's the salt bridge. Because in a battery, you have to have a salt bridge to connect the anode and cathode together for the battery to work. And we live in a battery which is all this. That's an entire battery here, folks. It's what it's all about. And the heart is what runs it all. So what are you in love with? What do you put out on your social media? You gotta be careful what you post, you feed it. Going a little bit further, when you add them up, 51 plus 44 is 95, the as above, 49 and 67 is 116, the so below, when we add those up, folks. You're going to get the number 211. Some of you already know what that number is. That's right. It is the 47th prime number. Wow. Leading us back once again to the tetragrammaton. So your separation, your division probably just got squashed because it all leads to the same origins, folks. Just got to have love in your hearts, you know? So look at this. I mean, going a little bit further, the name Baphomet, it appeared in transcripts of the Knights Templar. That started in the year 1307. There is that 137 again. Huh. 33rd prime number. I mean, you know, look, I, as somebody sitting down with Wikipedia and saying, you know, we got to make it start in 1307. That's possible. Very possible. But, folks, I mean, come on. Look at these connections just keeps being shown over and over and over. 33 steps, there it is, going up into the third eye, the pineal gland, the nine and the 14, where you have liberation, salvation, ascension. 33 steps, 137. That's why Washington, D.C. chose that name. Well, I mean, they didn't choose it, but that's why 137 is Washington, D.C. It's all about the 33. I mean, look at this. This guy right here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. He's the one who kind of invented the um, the upside-down pentagram, which is, has Baph Baph the, the, the goat's head in there, Samael and Lilith. This guy was born April 6th. It's the 96th day of the year. And, you know, I was watching... Um, I was watching a movie, and it showed the Medal of Honor, and I caught this, and I was like, holy mackerel, look at that. It's an upside-down pentagram. <laughs> I don't know if that's why they chose that for the shape of it, but uh, kind of looks similar to the image here, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, it does. You could decode Valor and Medal of Honor and all that stuff, and you're going to find some other important links as well. But I'll leave it right there, folks. Topic number four. The atomic bomb. This one actually brought tears to my eyes when I was... I had to stop what I was doing because I kind of teared up and got really emotional. Um, all those people that lost their lives, all because man just needs to be complete assholes and really have no hearts. Um, I don't care what kind of war you're in, but you know, all these innocent people passed away with these bombs, absolutely insane. And you know, again, um, just pointing out the obvious, August 6th, the first titan uh, uranium bomb on Hiroshima came down. That's the Seven of Diamonds card. August 6th is the Seven of Diamonds. And then August 9th, just three days later, they dropped a plutonium bomb on Nagasaki. Uh, there's your 6-9 right there, folks. You see that right there? There's your yin-yang. And that's, you know, the August 9th card's the Four of Diamonds. And there's your 74 or your 47. 
and brings in those two elements, um, illumination and Saturn's moon Titan. You know, so uh, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't want to go too much into this. It's kind of really sad, actually, all these people that lost their lives. But nonetheless, obviously see the sinks here that are undeniable. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it brings in this here. I mean, the seven and the four, the two cards for the two bombs that were dropped. And, um, you know, that's 74 or 47. Notice, you know, these two characters who people feel um, are opposites of one another, which may be the case, good cop, bad cop, but nonetheless, both necessary in this world of dualistic uh, energy, um, Jesus, Lucifer. And that's where, you know, Lucy in the sky, Lucifer is, uh, you know, feminine and Lucy. You know, a long time ago, I thought Jesus was the feminine. Now I realize it's Lucifer that's mainly feminine and that's Lucy. And in the sky, the skies above us, of course, diamonds, and there it is, um, where they drop the bombs from in the sky. From the sky, uh, notice, you know, Dragon and Michael, of course. I showed that through Baphomet, are 22, and there it is. It's titanium, and then you get into Greek mythology, the Titans and the Olympians, folks. It goes really, really deep. Most people won't even dare to go even this deep because um, they're just not interested in that stuff. I don't know why, but. To me, knowledge is far superior to any money you could possibly pay me. And that's why the spotlight's there, folks. This is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And there we are. The parasite human being that we are. We're the virus. We're the black suns. We don't give off any light of our own. We absorb it from the sun above. Topic number five is the evangelist, the massive one, Joel Osteen. Guy brings in 40,000 plus each week. I mean, unbelievable. I look at these people and I look at these places they open up as archetypes. I mean, are they doing good for the world or are they just bamboozling people? I'm not one for religion and I'll show you why. Although, you know, he's got some great things to say. I've heard some of his, um, his, uh, his books and uh you know i know people that follow him he's got a lot of great things to say absolutely i don't take anything away from that but i want to know the origins i want to know what makes this guy tick where is he coming from what's he sh what's he spewing out you know and is he a wolf in sheep's clothing and he may not even know it well look at i mean his name full birth name is 66 that matches donald john trump his name equals 66 that act that, that also equals Michael Richard Pence, the vice president, his name equals 66. And then, of course, the current Pope of the Vatican, Jorge, his name also equals the number 66. Um, so, you know, there's that vantage point to observe from. I wanted to point out his last name. Your last name, of course, was given to you. Your parents didn't give that to you. It was through your lineage, perhaps indicating part of your destiny. But anyway, old scenes of 29, and this is where this character comes in. You know, Yaldabaoth, the octopus, which to me is the yod heh -Vah -Heh. I mean, they're all the same. But uh, is Yaldabaoth controlling religion? Well, you know, let's get into his wife. Before I get into the religion part, let's look at his wife. This has a lot to do with Mr. Joel Osteen. She was born Victoria Iloff. From Alabama her dad check this out her dad was a mathematician he worked for General Electric but look at this he was a member of General Electric a General Electric Electric's Saturn rocket project team notice General Electric is tied to the 137 which is the 33rd prime number and uh, you know at night in 1963 she moved with her family because her dad took a position with NASA! NASA! I should tell you loud and clear. Keep in mind, Houston, Texas, the latitude of Houston, 29 degrees. 29 is Yaldabaoth. But anyway, NASA is a big lie. They don't tell you the truth. They actually lie to your face and put in a bunch of deceit. And this, this, this lady was raised with that kind of stuff. Saturn rocket, GE, I mean, you know, kind of clear right there. And this, this dude, marries her and I'm going to show you why they were destined to me because it's all about predestination and being used but here it is folks religion why I don't why I, I was raised in religion which I don't 
I, I don't scoff at, I, I value the importance of it because it gave me kind of a vantage point to observe life from. But look at this, folks. Look at who runs religion. Clear as day, 89 in the English. That's the character Yaldabaoth, the octopus, which is the yod And, um, you know, 27 through the Chaldean religion, that's the dragonfly. The great dragon got hurled down. What a load of bollocks that is. But dragonfly, of course, the 27 obviously has great significance to tell us the story of what religion is all about. And then keep in mind, the 27th element is cobalt. And I have chaos in order here because see cobalt's abbreviation. There's the chaos in order, cobalt. And of course, this is related to Lucifer because Lucifer ends up becoming the element nickel, which is sharing the 58 with cobalt. Nickel's 28, cobalt's 27. And numbers, they encroach upon one another. And I want to zoom in. Check this out. This is cobalt's actual picture that the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to choose. The, na the name cobalt is derived from cobalt, meaning goblin, which can you see the goblin right there? Pretty evil looking dude. And then look at the two dragons on each side. Hmm. I wonder why there's a dragon there. And here's the acorn, perhaps. I don't know. But nonetheless, folks, I mean, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. And again, this is the value of putting these pieces together, folks, not just using numerology. If you just use numerology, well, good luck to you, because, you know, you're just going to hit dead ends and then you're just making stuff up at that point, because you can have any word match up with any word. I mean, you can just search long enough. It's when you bring in other layers that are not have any relation to numerology itself so but it ties in strongly as you can see this is where joel osteen went to college and got his degree to be a pastor oral roberts university look at the look at the symbology there's your upside down triangle and i mean look at this symbology right there what do you see there? There's the pyramid. Obviously indicating prayer, but, uh, you know, and then you can relate this to other symbology as well. Use your imagination. Come on, you're smart enough, you know that. Oral Roberts University is a three, zero, five, through the string of pi. It's located at the 365th decimal digit. That is the days in the Gregorian calendar. Pretty big deal right there, if you ask me. This is the guy who started it all, Mr. Oral Roberts himself. He was the grandfather. I mean, this dude was a big freaking deal coming up the ranks in religion. He was Protestant, and I mean, this guy, is was he was a big deal, folks, on the world stage. Which is why he has the university accredited to go to school and then get your degree. Big deal. Obviously, man's being used. Look at these sinks, folks. The 24th of January is when he was born. This is the January 24th card. It's the 29th card. Guess who has this card? Donald John Trump, Bernie Sanders, two politicians. Doesn't mean everybody that has this card is going to be working for the side that you probably don't want to work for. But use your common sense. Got to use logic and common sense. Most people do not have that. Not you, as I like to say. The offshoot of the three of diamonds, the three of pentacles, which is the 66 card. And, you know, Joel Osteen, what was he going to Oral Roberts University? He was an apprentice, which is why Donald John Trump had a TV show called The Apprentice. So this is his card. I wonder if they knew that, making the show. <laughs> now, I mean, how are you really supposed to wrap your mind around this any other way? When you see these connections. Clear. Crystal clear. Oral Roberts goes by mind, body, and spirit. There it is. That equals the number 47. Another match to the Tetragrammaton. Again, folks, using just the Chaldean, you'll notice I'm primarily using this. So these are strong tie-ins right here. What do you think it's tied to? Tetragrammaton. 
It was first into play in 1963. 1963 is a 63. And the element that has an atomic weight or mass of 63 is the element copper. That's the 29th. That's related to Yaldabaoth. Remember, Boaz and Yachin were made of copper. The two pillars, copper. And Boaz and Yachin equal 33, by the way. This is the big kicker for this guy. Him and his wife, his last name and her last name, Osteen and Iloff. They equal the number 56. And that's where we're going to get into topic number six, which is Ohm's Law here in a minute. But look at this. Part of Ohm's Law and what makes up our matrix reality, you need voltage, which is kind of the spark, and then you need the current, the currency, which takes that spark and turns it into electricity. Voltage and current. Look at what their last names equal. 56. Bring these two people together and they create voltage and currency, which strengthens their story. And then you bring their two cards together using their last names. Joel has the three of diamonds, which was Oral Roberts card. And, uh, she has the Ace of Diamonds, Victoria, 27, which is related to the Dragonfly and Cobalt. She was living in a household that was working for NASA. When you bring those two together, three diamonds, Ace Diamonds, you get the number 88, which is related to the last name, Trump's last name equals 88. Time travel, Marty McFly, Back to the Future. 88s are related to yttrium, which is the snake's tongue. It goes on and on, folks. But here it is. The 56, Joel Osteen and his wife goes into Ohm's Law, the sixth topic. And, folks, here it is. I mean, you know, I'm using this as my guide here because here is the actual mathematical equation, the pyramid of voltage, current, and resistance. And, you know, it's some may look at it in other ways, to actually figure out the mathematical equation, but you need voltage and current. Those go together, the spark and then the electricity. And then you have, excuse me, you have resistance that kind of holds it all back, controls the outcome of the voltage and the current. So Joel Osteen and his wife are the voltage and current. And what provides the resistance? Well, of course, the human beings do. We provide the resistance. But notice, barium which is why the seventh topic is the number 56, because barium is the 56th element. Look at its atomic weight, folks. 137, which is the 33rd prime number. So you have voltage and current, two of the pieces of the Ohm's Law being barium, and then you have resistance being germanium. And when you go over to the trusty calculator and you add those up, folks, you're going to get the number 200. And 11, which is the 47th prime number. When you go a step further with the numerology, barium, voltage and current, and germanium, which is the resistance, you get the 47, tied to the 211, which is, you know, tied to their atomic masses added up. And then we go a step further, 211 in the string of pi appears at the 93rd decimal digit 93 94 95 but 93 and what is 93 through the english saturn saturn is 93 and here's a link to saturn 137 is the 33rd prime number that's linked to barium and then the resistance in the ohm's law is germanium and that's 73 and the number 73 is the 21st prime number. So you got two of these elements that make up Ohm's Law, which is our matrix, by the way. It's not trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. I'm not making stuff up. This is real math. Real things that can be measured in a laboratory, barium, germanium, 33, and 21. And folks, if you want to get really technical, 2 plus 1 is 3. That would be 3, 3, 3. 
So what about the resistance of the voltage and the currency? That would be us. We are the resistance. You know, Alex Jones of InfoWars, he likes to say, you're part of the resistance. Well, yeah, of course we are. That is true. Because, see, when the currency comes down, the electrical spark comes through, the waves come down through this matrix reality, through the torus fields, through our body, our body offers the resistance because it's physical in some ways. And, you know, that is tied to 32, which is tied to Capricorn, the goat. And the goat represents number 10 in the zodiac, and that's the Yod. We are the Yod. We are Yaldabaoth. Jesus, Lucifer, we're all that tied into one called the human being. You can say Adam and Eve, that's okay too. But we're Jesus, Lucifer, all wrapped up in one. And we're made up of electricity. I mean, this is it, you know, body. Look at this. This is what makes up the resistance. And this is why I've said time and time again, and I'll keep saying it, folks, you, you, you that are listening to this, you are your own Satan. Satan is the adversary. You have two black suns. Next time you look in the mirror, look, look at the pupils, the two black suns. Well, there's your Satan. You're Satan, folks. And it's up to you to ascend, to change your life, to win the game of life through being a good person. You know, being happy, being joyous, vibrating at a high level. And wisdom and knowledge is what will win the game, not money. You ain't gonna fit a Ferrari six feet under in the casket. So you can go and collect all those things all you want, but see folks, wisdom is what you'll need to win the game of life. But of course, this character wants you to have all the perks of what life's all about, which is where our demise comes into play. And that leads to the number 56, the last ca uh, category, number seven. Thanks for sticking with me. And I only have two slides with this one, the number 56. Again, folks, here it is. It's related to barium. You've seen the 56, now you're going to know why. Barium, and this comes right off the Royal Society of Chemistry. The name comes from the Greek word baris, and it means heavy. Why does it mean heavy? Because it's related to the planet Saturn. How did I get that? Well, you see, folks, the number 56 appears at the 210th decimal digit of pi. 210? And 211, 56 is a double, a two number, five and six, 210 and 211. So this is another way you can observe it. Yeah, you can observe it through the 210, but it's also the 211. The 210, here it is, Saturn's 21. 210 plus 211 in the string of pi equals the number 421. Then we go ahead and bring in number empire again, and the number 421 appears I'm sorry, 421 is the 82nd prime number. Of course, that leads to the element lead, which is Saturn's, one of Saturn's elements. So you can see, you know, why is Boris meaning, why does it mean heavy? Because it's lead. You see how all this stuff ties in? And if you're just using this, you're never going to get anywhere. Your narrative's gonna be so watered down. You gotta, you gotta use numbers and math and the elements. I mean, this is telling us the true narrative of what our matrix is really all about. I mean, look at this, it's clear. 82, 421, 421, 56, barium means heavy. It's lead, Saturn. I mean, look at this right here. I'm gonna leave it off with this one. I mean, look at 137 is 33. This is, again, and I'm showing this because barium average atomic mass is 137, which is an 11, by the way. 7 plus 3 plus 1 is an 11. But nonetheless, it's the 33rd prime number. 137 appears at the 859th decimal digit of pi, and then you go back to number empire. It's the 149th prime number. I mean, you just keep going. But folks, when you start to see prime numbers, that's a pretty big deal. That's when you know you're on to something, especially in, the, in the, the realm of what we're doing here. Okay, so now you know what the 56 is all about. So folks, what is it that you saw during this presentation? And you know, hey, I greatly appreciate your comments and feedback. You know, add to, because I'm just giving you what I saw. I, 
probably missed a lot of stuff, but you know, I'm only one set of eyes. So I'm asking you, what did you see? Leave some comments. Give me some feedback. Please subscribe. Share this video as much as you want. I'm not afraid of that. Obviously looking to get more people on the page of this methodology. You know, I mean, we're strength in numbers. So that's all I got for today. My name is Logan for Decode Your Reality. This is Random Thoughts number eight. Thank you so very much for watching.